This is Chapter 3, Forecasting. I'm uh, the professor, Dr. Eddie Witzel. A forecast is a statement about the future value of a variable of interest. So we make forecasts about such things as weather, demand, and resource availability. Uh, forecasts are important for making informed decisions. So there's two important aspects of forecast. The expected level of demand and this is the level of demand, maybe some function of structural variation, such as it says trend or seasonal variation. And then the second is accuracy. This is the potential size of the forecast error. So forecast uses. So one of them is to plan the system. So this is uh, generally involves long-range plans, so the types of products and services to offer, facility equipment, uh, levels, facility location. And then the second is plan the use of the system. This um, is, it involves short-term and medium-range plans. So inventory management, workforce levels, purchasing, production, budgeting, scheduling. Forecasts are not perfect. Because of random variation is always present, there will be some residual error even if all other factors have been accounted for. Elements of a good forecast. So the forecast should be timely, accurate, reliable. <laughs> it should be expressed in meaningful units. It should be in writing it should be simple to use and understand, and it should be cost-effective. Steps to forecasting process. First, you determine the purpose of the forecast. You establish the time horizon. You obtain, clean, and analyze appropriate data. You select a forecasting technique. You make the forecast and then you monitor forecast errors. Forecast accuracy and control. So allowances should be made for forecast errors. It's important to provide an indication of the extent to which the forecast might deviate from the value of the variable that actually occurs. Forecast errors should be monitored. So the error is actual minus the forecast. If errors fall beyond acceptable bounds, corrective action may be necessary. So here's some um, accuracy measurement uh, metrics. So the first one is MAD, mean absolute deviation, and this is um, it weights all errors evenly. So you take the sum of the actual minus forecast divided by n. And then the second one is the mean square error, MSE. These, this weights errors according to their squared values. So it's actual minus forecast squared, the sum of that divided by n minus 1. And then the last one is mean absolute percent error. Um, it weights errors according to the relative error. So you take the actual minus forecast divided by actual um, times 100, and then that's divided by n. So that, that's sort of a percentage. So here's, here's an example um, forecast calculation error. So there's periods 1 through 5. Um, you can see that on period 1, the actual was 107. The forecast was 110. So now if you, you say, what's the actual minus forecast? Um, it's minus 3. You take the absolute value of that, that's 3. So the error squared is 9. So then the error divided by actual is um, times 100 is 2.8%. Now you take, take that for each line, and then you add them up. So... Um, the sum of errors is 13, the sum of errors squared is 39, and then the percentage 
um, is 11.28%, and then you divide by either n or n minus 1, depending on the, the method. So you see here the um, MAD is 2.6, the MSE is 9.75, and the MAPE is 2.25%. So here's some forecasting approaches. There's the qualitative forecasting. Um, this um, it, it includes soft information such as in human factors, personal opinions, hunches. These factors are difficult or impossible to quantify. And then there's qualitative forecasting. These techniques rely on hard data. Quantitative techniques involve either the projection of historical data or the development of associative methods that attempt to use causal variables to make a forecast. So here's some um, qualitative forecast examples. Um, so, you know, one might be executive opinions, and this is actually fairly common in companies. You know, the, the managers get together and they say, well, you know, what do you guys think? You, you know, do, is, is sales going to go up or is it going to go down? Uh, those kind of things. So um, this is a small number of upper level managers um, develop the forecast. And then there's sales force opinions. So the members of the sales staff or customer service staff, um, they may be good source of information because they have direct contact with customers. And they may be aware of the plans customers may be considering. Another option is customer surveys, where you just go around and ask customers, are you going to buy more, are you going to buy less? You could um, get a sample of customer opinions. And then there's other um, approaches where managers may solicit opinions from other managers or staff, people, outside experts um, uh, with developing a forecast. And then there's the Delphi method is an iterative process and that's used to achieve consensus. So it's actually a method that's qualitative where a group of people um, iterates um, until you get to a, a consensus on the forecast. Time series forecasts. So um, forecasts that project patterns identified in recent time series observations. So a time series is an ordered sequence of observations taken at regular um, time intervals. So you assume that future values of the time series can be estimated from past values of the time series. So um, there, there's two considerations. There's trends and there's seasonability. So a trend is a long-term upward or downward movement in data. So um, you could have population shifts, you could have changing incomes, um, you know, sales this year is more than last year, and it's more than the year before, it's slowly going up. And then the second is seasonability. So th these are short-term, fairly regular variations um, related to ca calendar or time of day. Of day. So, um, so we, we think normally of seasons as years, you know, and, um, and the retail industry has a... Um, very strong seasonability. Um, you know, we, we have uh, Black Friday, the day after Thanksgiving. That's the day that a lot of retail um, es establishments go into the black. In other words, they lose money up until Thanksgiving Day, and then that last piece of the year is when they make all their profit. Um, and then, but then there's seasonability that's short term. So um, if you go to my favorite Chipotle, um, it's going to have seasonability around lunch and uh, supper time. Um, there's also weekly seasonability where depending on where it is, they could have higher or lower um, uh, based on the day of the week. So some restaurants have really high on Friday night, uh, maybe really low on Sunday night. Um, or Monday night, so so it could also be um, daily seasons plus weekly seasons plus time of year seasons. So there there could be multiple seasonalities together. Cycles and variations. 
So a cycle is wave-like variations lasting more than a year. So this is often economic, political, agricultural conditions where you know you go up for a few years and then you go down for a few years. And then there's irregular variations and this is um, something that's not typical behavior, a labor strike, a weather event, um, a terrorist activity, something that's um, a major disruption or interruption. Um, and then there's random variation. So this is really the residual variation after you've taken into account um, all the other variations that you can, can account for. There's still going to be random variations. Everybody shows up for lunch the same day, not for any reason that you knew. Okay, so time series forecasting. So um, the naive forecast. So um, the naive forecast uses a single previous point of a time series as the basis for the forecast. So in other words, whatever happened today, um, uh, we're going to use the same value for tomorrow. Um, or if we're forecasting a week, whatever we got this week, we're going to use for next week. Whatever the, the time period is, you just when you get to the end of the time period, you add it up and you forecast the future is the same as today. And this can be um, used with stable time series. Um, it can be used with seasonal variations and it can also be used with a trend. So the next is averaging. So this is where um, you take the last some number um, and, and there's a couple of, uh, of ways of doing it. Um, so you, you average the last few, um, and, and so then there's some techniques. There's moving average, there's weighted moving average, and exponential smoothing. Um, but uh, those, those essentially um, use the previous um, period. Some, you, you pick the period, uh, the, the number, and you average them together using some method. So here's the me method of uh, the moving average. So it simply takes um, a sum of the uh, averages. So um, you, you take, the, it's the sum of the actual divided by, um, divided by um, the, uh, the number. So um, the forecast for time it is the number you're forecasting. The moving average is the end period moving average. So it's the actual value of the, the previous n number of periods divided by n. So um, that's, that's the formula for moving average. Um, as new data becomes available, the forecast is updated by adding the newest value and dropping the oldest and then recomputing the average. The number of data points included in the average determines the model's sensitivity. Fewer da data points, it's more responsive. More data points is less responsive. The next is a moving, a weighted moving average. And this is where the most recent values in a time series are given more weight in the computational forecast. So, um, so you take each of those values and you put a weight onto it. Um, and then the weight, um, so, so you, you have the weight for the period, uh, weight for period t minus 1, um, and then you take the actual values and you weight them. And then exponential smoothing. This is a weighted average method that is based on the previous forecast plus a percentage of the forecast error. So um, you, you, you essentially take the, the um, forecast for the period and the forecast per the previous um, period and um, you do a smoothing constant and um, you put them together and it, uh, it smooths it so that that way um, if your error was really bad last time it sort of corrects it for this time. 
So the linear trend. So um, the linear trend is um, where where the data um, can be plotted as a slope. So um, th this is where f equals a plus bt. So you have some value um, at t equals 0, a. You have a slope of the line and a specified number of time periods. So um, then the next is the techniques for seasonality. So um, if you have regularly repeating movements in a series of values that can be tied to recurring events. So this is expressed in terms of the actual values devi deviated from the value of the series. So there's models of a seasonality. There's one is an additive model and the other is a multiplicative model. So the additive seasonality expressed as a quantity that gets added to or subtracted from the time series at average in order to incorporate seasonality. So, um, and then multiplicative is seasonality is expressed as a percentage of the average or trend amount, which is then used to multiply the value of the series in order to incorporate seasonality. So one is uh, added and the other is multiplied. And then here's some associative forecasting techniques. Um, and these um, are predictor variables. So predictor variables can be used to predict values of the variable of interest. So um, home values may be related to such factors as home and property size, location, number of bedrooms, number of bathrooms. So you could, you could have these predictor variables. Um, in this case, you know, the size is a predictor variable, location is a predictor variable, number of bedrooms, number of bathrooms, those are all predictor variables. And you put those into your formula and that helps you um, predict. Okay, there's simple linear regression. Um, so this, there, that means that there's a linear relationship between two variables. Um, so the object is to cre create a straight line that minimizes the sum of the squared uh, vertical deviations um, from the line or the least squares criteria. So some issues to consider. If you're doing linear re uh, regression, you always plot the line and look at it because you can have really cool numbers and when you plot the line, you know, you just like, no, that, that doesn't match. Um, and then the other thing to remember is that the data may be time dependent. Um, so if you're using analysis of a time series or time is an independent variable in multiple regression analysis. And then the last one is a small correlation may indicate that other variables are important. So if you don't see very much correlation, maybe this is not the right um, linear regression formula. Maybe you have other variables. So monitoring the forecast. So you want to be tracking the forecast errors and analyzing them um, because that's useful whether the, the forecasts are performing satisfactory. Um, so there are sources of forecast errors. The model may be inadequate due to the omission of an important variable, a change or shift in the variable model that the model cannot handle, or the appearance of a new model. Um, there can be irregular irreg variations may have occurred. Um, random variation could be another source. So control charts are useful um, for identifying the presence of non-random error in forecast. And tracking new tool, uh, signals can be used to detect uh, forecast bias. So choosing our forecast techniques. So, so you need to consider cost, accuracy, the availability of historical data, the availability of, of forecasting software, the time needed to gather and analyze the data and prepare a, a forecast in the forecast horizon. So the strategy is the better forecasts are, um, the more able organizations will be to take advantage of future opportunities and re reduce potential risks. 
Um, so it's a worthwhile strategy um, is to work to improve the short term forecast. So um, accurate up for up to date information can be a significant effect on forecast accuracy, your prices, your demand and other variables. Um, so if you reduce the time horizons that um, forecasts um, cover, you um, make them more accurate. And sharing forecast or demand data through the supply chain can improve forecast quality. So in other words, you can go out and say, this is what we think the forecast is. And then either your customers or your suppliers, they can, they can say, hold it, that doesn't make sense. What about this and this and this? And then um, you, you have the opportunity to improve your accuracy. So this has um, been uh, chapter three forecasting. So in summary, a forecast is a statement about the future valuable variable interest. There's a couple of forecasting approaches, the qualitative approach where you, know, you um, base that on um, human input or thoughts or hunches, and then the quantitative forecasting where you actually take some data and you, you put, put it through some mathematical modeling. Um, and then, you know, really the best, in my opinion, is to do both. So you, you have the quantitative data that's based on, and then you, you, you show that to people and or or you ask for their input and um, and then bounce it back and forth, and and people, um, especially um, people with knowledge, will say, well, what about this or what about that? And then the the third thing is trends and seasonability. So trends is you know long term, it's you're going up or you're going down, and then seasonability is those things that you can predict, whether it's uh, every year, every week. Um, every day, uh, you know, the time of day, if you can explain it and put it into a model, that's seasonability.